Hello and welcome to this Key Stage 5 video on simple graph transformations of y equals f of x. Now this is in some ways going to be a recap of what you did uh, earlier down on in school, but let's go through the basics. Let's just say that we had f of x is equal to x squared. Now what would f of x plus 1 be? Well, if f of x is x squared, then f of x plus 1 would be x plus 1 squared, because we're making the input of this function x plus 1, so we do that input squared. Now, if we were to sketch y equals f of x, that is y equals x squared, and we know that quadratic functions like y equals x squared is going to look like this. So that's y equals f of x. Now, what if we were to sketch y is equal to f of x plus 1. So we can see here we're sketching y equals x plus 1 squared. Now in the video on quadratic graphs we saw that the root of this would be minus 1 and it's still going to be a smiley face shape because it's a quadratic graph so it's going to go like that. Now can you see that this graph has translated 1 to the left because initially that minimum point was at 0, 0 and now that minimum point we can see has moved 1 to the left to get to minus 1, 0. So it seems that when we change the input of this function notation, when we change the x to x plus 1, the result was to translate the graph 1 to the left. And we can summarise how we affect the graph when we have different variants of y equals f of something or something f of something. And it's this. If the change is inside the function, then it affects the x-axis and it does the opposite of what you expect. And if the change was outside the function, then it affects the y-axis and it does what you expect. Now, this will become clear when I do a few examples. So let's apply it to these particular questions here. We've got this sketch here and we've got that minimum point there of 1 minus 2 and we've got an x-intercept of 3 and we want to sketch these different variants of y equals f of x. So that's the original sketch y equals f of x there. So the first one, we've got y is equal to f of x minus 2. Now if we refer to this particular table here, we can see here that that change of minus 2 is inside the function, so therefore it's going to affect the x values and it's going to do the opposite of what we expect. So this minus 2 is going to affect the x values because it's inside the function and it's going to do the opposite, the opposite of minus 2 is add 2. So we just need to add 2 to all the x values. So if we sketch this, let's do it point by point. Well, we add 2 to that point zero, 0 there, so that gives us 2. And this other root here, we add 2 to it, so 3 plus 2 is 5, so that's now at 5. And also let's transform this point, the 1 minus 2, we add 2 to the x value, that becomes 3 minus 2. And now we have everything we need to sketch the graph, it's going to do this. And note there's no way to work out this wind set, we just don't have enough information to do that. What about b, which I just changed, apologies, uh, we've got y equals f of x, plus 2. Now let's look at our table again. That plus 2 there is outside the function, so it's going to affect the y values and does what you expect. So therefore, we're going to do what we expect, the plus 2, not the opposite, to the y values. So that's going to translate the graph up 2. So let's sketch that again. So this point 1 minus 2, we add 2 to the y value, and that's now going to be 1, 0. This point here, where x is 3, that's 3, 0 at the moment, the coordinate. I'm going to add 2 to the y value, so that's 3, 2. And this point here, 0, 0, is going to go up to 0, 2. And then we can just sketch it again, like that. And we don't really need to indicate this point anymore, because it's not a significant point on this curve. It's not a maximum point, it's not a minimum point, it's not a root. And again, there's no way to work out what that root is, unless we have the original equation of the curve. How about c? y is equal to f of 2 of x. Again, let's refer to this table. This change of the 2 is inside the function, so it's going to affect the x values as the opposite. So therefore, if the x values have been times by 2, we do the opposite of halving the x values, dividing them by 2. So if we sketch this, that 1 minus 2, where we're halving the x values, so that becomes 0 0.5 minus 2. And that x-intercept there, 3, we halve it to just become 1.5. The 0, 0 stays the same because 0 halved is 0. 
and that's all we need. So we can now sketch this. And if we were to describe this transformation, we would say it's a stretch parallel to the x-axis of scale factor half. So in other words, we're basically squishing it. We're making it half as wide. How about d? y is equal to f of half x. Again, this time the half is inside the function. So we're going to do the opposite of half x. We're going to actually double x, remembering that the change is inside the function, so it affects the x values. So we're going to double the x values from the original. So the 1 minus 2 becomes 2 minus 2. That 3 there becomes 6. And again, the 0, 0 stays as it is. So we're going to get that. And if we were to describe this, it'd be a stretch parallel to the x-axis of scale factor 2 this time. How about e? y is equal to minus f of x. Now this minus is outside the function, so it's going to affect the y values and does what we expect. So we're just going to negate the y values, or times the y values by minus 1. So we do that. That 1 minus 2, we negate the y values, so that minus 2 gets negated to become positive 2. So it's now 1, 2, noting that the x value has not changed. That point 3, 0 stays as it is, because negating the y value of 0 stays as 0. And again, 0, 0 stays the same. And then if we draw it, noting that this is going to become a positive y value because we're negating the y value, it's going to come down like this, clip that, and then go down. So you can basically see that this graph has been flipped upside down because each y value has been negated to get to the other side of the x-axis. So if we want to describe this, this is a reflection in the x-axis. And finally, f we've got y equals f of minus x. Now that changes inside the function, so it's going to affect the x values and do the opposite. But the opposite of negating is still just negating. Well, the opposite of timesing by minus 1 is divided by minus 1, which is the same as timesing by minus 1. So we're just negating the x values. So that 1 minus 2, negate the x value, becomes minus 1 minus 2. That x value 3 becomes minus 3. And the 0, 0 stays the same, so we draw these key points first. And then this x value here on that tail is going to be made positive because you're negating that x value, so it's now over here. So it comes up like this, comes down here, and comes up like this. So we can see that basically the graph has been reflected in the y-axis. It's been flipped over like that. So that's a reflection in the y-axis. And finally, we can use these principles to sketch some common graphs. So this is a reciprocal graph, and we, we saw reciprocal graphs in a separate video. And we know what y equals 1 over x looks like. It looks like this. So let's just say we're trying to sketch y is equal to 1 over x plus 2 plus 3. Now let's look at each of these modifications from this graph to this graph. Firstly, can you see that that plus 2 is inside this reciprocal function? So that's going to affect the x values because it's inside the function and do the opposite of plus and 2. So we're going to minus 2 from the x values, or in other words, a translation of minus 2, 0. So initially, the graph is going to translate 2 to the left. So it's like this now, and like this. And note there's a vertical asymptote here of x equals 0. But now the asymptote is going to be here. And if you don't know what an asymptote is, please do look at my video on reciprocal graphs. So this is a sketch of y is equal to 1 over x plus 2. We've dealt with that plus 2 inside the function affecting the x values and doing the opposite. But now we need to finally draw this one here. And this plus 3 here, notice that's outside the function. It's outside this reciprocal function. So it's going to affect the y values and do what you expect. So it's going to add 3 to the y values, i.e. translate it up by 3. So note again, there's a horizontal asymptote here. So that's going to shift up 3. So we now have it here at y equals 3. Always write the equation the asymptote on. We still have this vertical asymptote here. x is equal to minus 2. And then we can just draw the curve between these asymptotes. It's going to be like that and like that. And we saw in the reciprocal graph video how we work out these intercepts. Let's just quickly work out the y-intercept. To work out the y-intercept, you just make x zero, don't you? So if x is zero, substitute in here. One over zero plus two, that's half. Half plus three is three and a half. So that 
y-intercept would be 3.5. And we can similarly find this x-intercept by just making y zero. So if zero is equal to one over x plus two plus three, then we can work out that x-intercept. But I do that in my reciprocal graph video. What about b? Uh, this one's actually quite a bit simpler. We've got y equals x squared plus three. Well, we know what a y equals x squared graph looks like. It looks just like this, very standard graph. So notice this plus three is outside that squared function, and therefore it's gonna affect the y values and do what we expect. So it's gonna translate this up by three. So that point zero, zero is now zero, three, because it's gone up by three, and it's just gonna do a smiley face shape around that a minimum point like that. So that is y is equal to x squared plus three. Now we've got y equals sine of 2x, and we want the sketch between 0 and 360. So let's just start with sine of x, a simpler graph, between 0 and 360. So y equals sine x looks like this. It comes up, down, and then back up again. So this value here is 180. This value here, where the maximum is 90, that's 270 here, where the minimum is, and then we've got 360 here. And note that it goes up to 1, and the graph goes down to minus 1. So now if we sketch y equals sine of 2x, notice that change from here to here, that 2 there is inside the sine function, so it's going to affect the x values and do the opposite. So instead of timesing x values to 2, we're going to do the opposite, we're going to divide the x values by 2. So if we look at each point in turn on the original graph, that coordinate there is 91. So if we halve the x value, that 90 is going to become 45. So we now have 45, 1, going up there. And then that 180 is going to become 90. And then it's going to loop back around again. And this 360 now has become 180. But we need to go all the way up to 360. So if we go a bit further we can see it's going to do another oscillation like that, where that's 270 and that's 360. Now the y values aren't infected, so that's still a maximum y value of 1, and that's still a minimum y value of minus 1. And finally, we've got this graph of y equals minus 1 over x squared. Well, a y equals 1 over x squared graph looks like this. So it looks a bit like a reciprocal graph, but instead of this and this quadrant, because x squared is always positive, it's going to be in these two quadrants here. So if we then do that minus there, notice that minus is outside the function, so it's going to affect the y values, and it's going to negate those y values. So any positive y value, and all of these y values are positive, are now going to become negative. So it flips over on the x-axis. So if we draw that, it's now going to do this instead. So that's y is equal to minus 1 over x squared.